Welcome back. Oil prices have been on a roller coaster ride, mostly lower amid the drama surrounding the OPEC meeting last week. The, this morning, crude is under pressure again. Take a look. It's down one and a third percent, declining alongside equities. Joining us right now is the CEO of Canary, Dan Eberhardt. Dan, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Are you investing oh, you in oil-related areas? Uh, and what are you expecting oil prices to, to do th going into 2019? Sure, we, we are. Uh, you know, first of all, I think it's a bit of a pyrrhic victory, the OPEC uh, move. I think that they're, you know, it's just an admission that they're ceding market share to U.S. shale. So I think if you're investing in U.S. mid-caps, uh, EOG, Anadarko, Devon, people like that focused on U.S. shale, I think the U.S. production is going to continue to increase next year. Even though OPEC did say that they were willing to cut back, OPEC and allies coming to an agreement on Friday, Russia agreed to reduce oil output by one and a quarter million barrels, effective January 1. Uh, this coming despite President Trump's pressure to maintain the status quo on output levels. You think uh, there's not going to be any mm -hmm. issue in terms of production? Well, I, I, do, I do think there's going to be an issue, but I think that OPEC, which really these days, OPEC plus, really means Saudi Arabia, and Russia. They're taking 90 percent plus amount of the uh, 1.2 million barrel reduction. But I think that what's going to happen is the U.S. shale is going to continue to rise and that's going to put increased pressure on OPEC to cut production uh, in the middle of next year. Dan, good morning. Mitch Rochelle. With crude in the 50s, mm -hmm. where is the break even for the shale producers in terms of you know, when it doesn't make sense for them. And the thing I worry about is them starting to lay off workers and hurting the economy further as a result. That, that's a good question. And as, as an industry, I think oil and gas has gotten more and more competitive. So I think it's a commodity cycle, but I also think it's a technology cycle with shale. And so I think around $45 is going to be a break-even point where they can get adequate returns on capital and keep drilling. We're not seeing any slowdown. I think the industry is more conservative. And I think the cost structure has been uh, giantly reduced. So I think the activity levels in the U.S., in the U.S., uh, particularly in the Permian Basin and the Bakken, are going to continue to be strong, even with oil in the low 50s. I don't, I don't foresee uh, that big of a slowdown. I think the industry has still kind of got its belt tightened and spending under control from the last downturn. So I think OPEC has uh, really misjudged the the uh, veracity and the survivability of U.S. shale. And, and the reason that oil is where it is, is that because of an oversupply of, of product, or is this an indicative of a slowing global economy? There, there's definitely too much oil. So in the last six months, the U.S., Saudi Arabia, and Russia have added two million barrels a day of capacity, and those three have added uh, a million barrels of capacity in the last 90 days. So there's definitely an oil glut. And I think that Trump tricked the market a little bit tricked OPEC and tricked Russia with the Iran san Iranian sanctions and then kind of let the air out of the balloon with the waivers a bit. So I think that the uh, there's too much oil right now, but I think the market is going to quickly get in balance. All right, we'll leave it there. Dan, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you. Dan Eberhardt joining us there on oil.